You can't please all the people all the time. It's a simple fact of life. You try your very, very best, but there's always somebody who wants something different, something new, something more. And that problem is compounded when you're popular and famous. People just expect that more of you and you're under greater scrutiny. So can you imagine that if you are the most popular and recognizable car brand on the planet, the kind of pressure you're under? Well, that's something that kind of happened to Ferrari with the Portofino. People wanted more. And well, here we are. More. The Ferrari Portofino M. There's just so much to talk about with this car, but let's start with the outside. And yes, in my excitement, I've bungled up my Italian. It's modificata, not modificato, but you'll forgive me that, won't you? So the M in Portofino M stands for modificato, which sounds really fancy, but what it really means is modified. So does that mean the Portofino M is just a facelift? Of course not, it's a Ferrari. There are way more changes under the skin, but even the cosmetic changes, they do serve a function. Like these larger, more aggressive air intakes in the new bumper. Uh, this new little streak here that links you back to the air vent over there. And there's more stuff around the back as well. Here you'll find another revised bumper with a bigger and more aggressive diffuser. But more on that later. To my eyes, this is not the prettiest Ferrari. That is unquestionably the Roma although it does look a little bit better with the roof in place. Yes, that metal lid can be folded up or down in just 14 seconds, even on the move at up to 40 km an hour. And what's impressive is that even with it folded away, you get a decent 292 litres of space. No spare wheel though. There are two tiny cavities meant to be rear seats, but they're so small, it's frankly better to use them for soft bags. No, the place you want to be in a Portofino M is up front, so before we set off, let me tell you what it's like. Now the interior of the Portofino hasn't changed too much from the regular car to the M. Uh, there is of course a Portofino M badge. They tell me that the screen on the passenger side uh, is now a touch screen and not just a display screen so your passenger can interact with it a little bit more. Uh, and there's a bit more new software in the main touch screen over here. The touch screen itself however isn't quite as slick as what you'd find in a car of German origin but on its own it's not too bad. And it's got loads of features including sensor-based ADAS tech, 360-degree cameras and more. I really like uh, that you can do so many adjustments to the seat, it's all in the touchscreen. Of course, you've got to set this up before you get going. Um, I like the simplicity of the interior, otherwise it's, it's all very nice and neat and very, very focused, very Ferrari. And of course, uh, a lot of this might be optional, but the stitching and the detail, uh, it's just so exquisite and really that's all part of the Ferrari experience, not just driving the car. Speaking of the experience, Ferrari's interiors have been evolving so quickly that many elements you see in the Portofino M are already a thing of the past. And frankly, I will miss them. Things like these exquisite turbine-like AC vents that really focus the draft well and the relatively uncluttered center console with simple buttons to operate the gearbox. And of course, this might be the last Ferrari to have it, but this beautiful analog tachometer in the center. They've all gone digital now, and it's nice to have this old school thing. I don't think we're ever gonna see it again, so I'm gonna cherish it. Let's get going. On a crisp morning like this, set to comfort mode, gearbox in automatic, roof open, of course. It's just such a pleasant thing to drive and I guess that's also part of this car's remit. It has to be a consummate, comfortable, luxury Grand Tourer. And I have to say, even on these 20-inch wheels, it is superbly comfortable. It's not what you think of when you think Ferrari, is it? And look, you can even cross a rough patch like this as we found on this highway here. <laughs> no problem! Now the Portofino M doesn't have air suspension or even a nose lift function like some other Ferraris, but what they've done is given it decent ground clearance, by sports car standards of course, as well as optional Magnarite adaptive dampers. And that's what truly lets you choose between luxury car ride quality or supercar handling at the flick of a switch. And well, flick the switch over to Sport and... 
Oh boy, I can't stop grinning. This is just insane. So yeah, they've done the comfort stuff, but clearly they've not lost any sight of what a Ferrari is also meant to be. A thoroughbred. Now, as I said earlier, this is not just some facelift. No, no, no. When Ferrari updates a car, they go under the skin. Let's start with the engine. It is, of course, the 3.9 liter twin turbo V8 we know from before. But now it is in the Roma spec, which is 620 horsepower, 760 Newton meters. And it's also got the Roma's eight speed dual clutch gearbox up from the seven speeder of before. Now, of course, that eighth gear is meant for efficiency, but what it's allowed them to do is shorten the first seven gears to make the acceleration even more exciting. <laughs> oh my word. I mean, these paddles make me want to have paddle shifters in any car, even a manual. Oh, those carbon ceramic brakes bite hard. They take a little getting used to if you're unfamiliar. But once you do, oh, the stopping power is just astounding. They've also deleted the muffler in the exhaust. And so it sounds even crazier now. The reason they deleted the muffler in the exhaust is because, and this is such a Ferrari thing, They've had to fit GPFs, gasoline particulate filters, to help with emissions. And that had to soften the engine. That's what happens when you put in these GPFs. But Ferrari was not happy with the sound that was softer. So they removed the muffler. I mean, how Ferrari is that? It sure seems to have worked. The lack of mufflers also helped them change the rear end quite a bit. They've managed to put in a much larger diffuser than before. And this, of course, being Ferrari, it's real, it works, and it contributes to better stability. Now on the subject of stability and handling, let me just dial it back down a bit to tell you about this steering. Now, modern Ferraris are known for their ultra-quick steering, and of course, that helps agility and makes them dart into corners really fast. It's a great feeling when you're going really hard on it. But that's something that might feel a little bit at odds with the Portofino because, of course, it is a Grand Tourer. It's supposed to be comfortable. It's a convertible. It's the one that perhaps should not have got as quick a steering as all the others. But it does. And the good bit is it doesn't feel disconcerting to drive even when you are in comfort mode. You put it in automatic and you're just cruising. You get used to it pretty fast. But if you're in the mood to go for it, it is a wonderful thing. There are few cars I've driven with this much power that turn in so ridiculously quickly. You have to be on your toes. There's just so much to talk about when it comes to the way this car drives. It's a complex mix of opposing ideas that somehow comes together in harmony. And yet, above all this, it's still the engine that dominates proceedings. Like I assure you, it does not feel naturally aspirated. I, I won't give it that. It does rev pretty damn freely, but it does not feel naturally aspirated. But the way it revs and the sheer absence of turbo lag means it comes pretty damn close. Closer than most other cars I've ever driven. I remember speaking to one of the engineers when I went to Maranello and I said, how have you done it? How have you eliminated turbo lag? And he just said, it's gone. It's not there. And I was like, surely there's something. And he's like, no, it's gone. And now that I drive the car, I see what they mean. It's not just engineering. It feels like witchcraft. There really is no turbo lag. So in a nutshell, this Modificato is made to make the Portofino a little bit more Ferrari, a little racier and not just a soft GT. To that end, they've also added a race mode to the Manatino. It's now a five-stage Manatino like some of the sportier Ferraris. I'm not going to try and use that out here today, but what it means is that on a track, 
you can have a whole lot more fun and push it a whole lot harder. For now, on this road, sport mode is more than plenty. And it's such a joy to have the classic Ferrari analog rev counter still in front of you. That's the thing of the past now. The newer cars is all digital. But this just feels so, so good. <laughs> So alongside the Roma, this Portofino M is the entry-level Ferrari. But with a 620 horsepower V8, is anything but entry-level. Its starting price of 4.04 crore rupees ex-showroom and before options certainly doesn't feel entry-level either. But really, it's not the price or any other statistic that defines the Portofino M. It's how it manages to take all those contradicting demands and deliver on them. It's a coupe as well as a convertible. It's a comfy continent crushing GT. It's got four seats, almost. It's packing the latest tech. It's lathered in luxury. And yes, it's a thoroughbred Italian V8 supercar. But with this M version, Ferrari has added another layer of driver involvement and aggression and tied it all together beautifully. It truly can please all the people all the time. You know how they say, never meet your heroes? Meet your heroes! It's fine! It's better than fine! <laughs> so good! So, so good! Hey, and if you enjoy this video and you want to see more, please like, share and subscribe to the Autocar India channel. Click the bell icon to stay notified.